I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. And this is a video I don't expect to be forgiven. I just want to apologize. I should have never assumed the gender of the box of Lucky Charms Frosted Flakes that I reviewed the day before New Year's. It was wrong and I apologize to anyone who's been touched by a marshmallow illness or has ever been a victim of a serial killing. For anyone I've offended from my review, I'm sorry. The goal of my content is to provide entertainment and information on food, video games, movies, and every now and then the music that I make, but very little of that for some reason. It's never my intent to be ill-willed, mishearted, or malicious. What the fuck are you that, doing? Oh, oh, you're making a video. Well, here it is, motherfucker. You want to apologize to something? Go ahead and fucking apologize to his face. <laughs> this is not an option, motherfucker. You want to apologize to this box of Lucky Chow on Frosted Flakes. As I was saying, I don't expect to be forgiven. I don't expect GTS the King to defend my actions. Because they should not be defended. From now on, I'll just eat the cereal and not even bring up its gender or ask its preferred pronouns first. Goddamn right. Because it's all about the respect. <laughs> Alright, guys. We're Death Wish. We had to fucking do that. Uh, now, we already know that there's going to be some people out there who get a little butt hurt by that. But guess what? That's what we're here for. Low gang. Low gang? They put the gang uh, gang. So, if you, if you can't tell, this is Death Wish Wednesday. I'm GTS the King. And I'm very deeply, so no, I'm imbalanced. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Logan Paul once again this week. Uh, this time it's going to be a little bit different, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this Logan Paul's Respect <laughs> video that's been going around. I'm sure everybody's oh, seen it. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Oh, you've become a meme, Logan. So let's take a look at this video. Respect the culture. Japan is all about the respect. <laughs> The dumb Americans have arrived. Look good. I don't worry about me, I'm just a vlogger. Gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. Tokyo is a real life cartoon. What did he do? No. Now how it is in Japan, they're all about the respect. We're gonna be respectful. Look at Paul! Sign language for respect. Look, they just got out of the breath. I'll take the whole thing. What's the issue? And this one, uh, it's uh, just for a display. Oh, so we're gonna be respectful. The Game Boy Color. How much? Just pissing you off as a gamer. Ah! It's hot. Excuse me, sir. The game seems to be malfunctioning. Much old broken though. Pretty well. Toyota! I choose you! No! <laughs> okay, get him! I'll catch you! I choose you! Japanese police. Down. You just gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. It matters. People who are doing it different. People who walk on the street instead of driving in cars. Hi, how are you? Okay. The road to Japan. Hello. Hi. Hey. How many what? How many subscribers? Are you subscribed? He has no idea. What a road. Whoa. What a maverick. Yeah. We're gonna be respectful. Hey guys! Just gotta be careful to not like disrespect the culture. You, you sure you don't want this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Honestly, bro, I'm done with these fish. Japan is all about the respect. I know it's, it's true, so I gotta take my chach levels and bring them down. Japan, Tokyo specifically. Uh, thanks for putting up with your boy. Yeah, respect. Um, so yeah, we, we 
we've seen that video about a hundred times. I mean, everybody pretty much has oh, yeah. all over Facebook and every other social media. Uh, that's why we wanted to make our nice little joke at the beginning of this. But so, I guess the way I look at it is, he's disrespecting the fuck out of uh, the culture, I guess, and the aspect of being a complete dumbass. So I get why some people are like extremely offended. But what I want to talk about is everybody's talking about the fact that he disrespected the culture, he was a jackass, he did a bunch of stupid shit. Uh, you guys all act like this is new. That he's been, you know, like this is just like the new shit that he's started doing or something. This guy faked his own death in front of a shit ton of fans. Like, this is not yeah, new for like him. a headshot. Like yeah, a brutal death. Yeah, yeah, brutal shotgun shot to the back of the dome. Blood spray all over the glass in front of you know a crap ton of fans, like that's the guy we're talking about here. Now, for one, as as he said, I don't know exactly how old he is. Actually, let's let's go ahead and look that up just real quick, because I'd be shocked if he's older than like 21, 22. I mean, I don't I don't really know. How if he's old like he is. if he's like close to our age, I'm on Facebook. 22. So 22. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's so he's 22. 22 years old. So it's, first, he's 22. So. There's, you know, take that into consideration. There's a, a high level of immatureness uh, at that age. I mean, I know at 22, I don't remember a lot of my 22. I was an idiot, yeah, I'm not I mean, 20s. <laughs> from like 20 to 25, a lot of my memory is just a lot of fog. See, I made a big mistake. I got married at 21 and divorced at 21. So 22 was, yeah, there was a lot of drinking. Going yeah. On. I mean, I remember doing a lot of dumb shit at that age. Uh, the only difference is, is when I was 22, YouTube, yeah, it was around. I'm not that old, motherfuckers. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> it was all about MySpace. Yeah, it was. Yeah, god damn, it was MySpace. MySpace. But uh, YouTube was not as big as it is now. Uh, there wasn't as much traffic, and there and people weren't like talking about this dumb shit on a regular basis. This guy come up through Vine, being in the public eye, and then he gets on YouTube as a platform. The guy explodes with subscribers, like just astronomical. I mean, he's got like what, 15 million subscribers? Yeah, somewhere around there, like a ridiculously high amount. And he's still gaining, even after all this crap that he's oh, yeah. going through. I think he'll get even more after this. Yeah, well, we even said this is not going to hurt his career. No. This is going to be a minor speed bump. Uh, if YouTube does do anything about it, which I don't think they will, I think it'll be a slap on the wrist. I. Uh, I mean, I really, like a lot of people were saying, uh, they're comparing it to like the PewDiePie incident. Here's the thing is, I don't like that comparison because what PewDiePie said was a very well-known racist slur. The guy built up to that shit with the Nazi crap he did, which I know is all in fun. Yeah, yeah. It's all a joke. I get it. I think it was funny. It's just in poor taste. Uh, it's cringeworthy. And then he made a slip of the tongue said something stupid, and that just kind of killed everything he had going. So it wasn't that one incident. you got to look at the facts. There was a lot of things that built up to that moment, so he lost a lot as far as being partnered with YouTube and things of that nature. So I don't like that comparison, but Logan Paul, like, he's just an immature jackass. He's yeah. doing, you know, this maverick thing that he does for the low game, and it's funny to people of that age group, it's younger. funny to him. Yeah, younger people, they find it hilarious. The older crowd, I know, like everybody's dying to know what a fucking Native American 30 year old thinks and a 31 year old white guy. Like, um, I guess, which I feel dirty comparing it to this, but when we were God. kids, you know, jackass was the thing. Yeah. And I'm sure people our age at the time were like, why do people watch this shit? Yeah. So, yeah, I see, mean, I'm kind of out of touch yeah, with that age group. But my, my thing is, like, we grew up with stupid shit like that. We thought it was funny. Do you remember the one in Jackass where they drank horse cum? Yeah, that was... Ugh. Damn. I was thinking, there was... They did a lot of shit in Japan in the Jackass oh, yeah. movie, which is comparable to this. Yeah. Like, running around dressed like panda bears and shit. Humping people. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's why, like... What we wanted to touch on is, at this point, like, yes, we took a jab at him for the, the dead body thing. Yes, we think it was in poor taste. We stand behind what we fucking said. I still think it was stupid. I'm glad it's not, like, killing his career. Everybody makes mistakes. We're human. It was dumb. 
This thing, I think at this point, people are nitpicking. Uh, yeah. Logan Paul has become an easy target, so everybody's just like jumping on that bandwagon and starting to break shit down. Uh, like he said, this is comparable to shit that we grew up on or we seen and stuff like Jackass. I don't think it was that big of a deal. Was it disrespectful? Yeah. Respect. Yeah, respect. <laughs> but uh, it's no more disrespectful than what the guys at Jackass did. It's no more disrespectful than half the shit on the internet. So. I guess only defense because it's Jackass, they were self aware. Yeah. And. But honestly, you don't know that he's not. Yeah, that's true. You know, people, they say, like, oh, he's just a fucking moron. You don't <clears throat> know, like, how much of a character. He's portraying as himself, yeah. you know, because I, I know a lot of people uh, you meet in person, they're nothing like the characters they either portray on yeah. TV or on YouTube, because it's it's an exaggeration of your personality. I'm sure a market player is not scared to his wit's end of everything under All the, the sun. All the time, and <laughs> constantly screaming. Yeah. Uh, no, the only time I ever met him, uh, this was, I think, pre-YouTube or right at the like, verge of, like, when he started YouTube, uh, cause he hadn't even started his new channel, which, you, if you don't know, like, the channel he's on now, Markiplier Game, or something like that, that was his second channel, the first channel got fucked up, when I met him, it was in Cincinnati, Ohio, was at a bar, didn't know the guy, you know, obviously back then he wasn't anything, uh, but no, I mean, he seemed pretty normal, uh, I didn't talk to him a lot, like, we didn't sit down and have a conversation, but I do remember seeing him, uh, I, I want to say that a friend of his band was playing at the bar that night, and that's why he was there. Oh, okay. And, but anyway, like, he seemed, he seemed normal shit, like, nothing weird about him, not a big deal. And then you see him on here, which we're actually going to watch a video uh, from our player about respect. Uh, this is an older video, but... It's from, like, the beginning of last year, February 2017. Yeah. Uh, the reason we're going to watch it is because I don't think anybody could say it better than what he says in this video. What we're trying to get at is I think people need to back off of Logan Paul just a little bit. Yes, we took our jabs. We fucking... It was all in fun. Yeah, we shot him down. It was in fun. It was funny. Like, everybody got to laugh at him. You know, we made it very apparent that we are dead serious about mental health, and we thought it was fucked up that he did that. We're at the, we're at the age where like, if we get a chance to get a jab at those punk kids. Yeah. We're going Damn to. kids! <laughs> get off my lawn! Like, yeah. So, I mean, of course, of course we're going to still make fun of Logan Paul on a regular basis. But, like, people at this point, they're attacking him personally. Like, they're getting on a personal level. And they're starting to attack every little thing he does. And it's become this bandwagon effect where everybody's starting to do it. When I seen one of my favorite YouTubers, a lot of you might not have any idea who he is. One of my favorite YouTubers, fucking Mr. Dapperton, made a video about Logan Paul. Not one, but two videos here in the last little bit. Yes, he jumped on the thing with the, the body. I think we all did as a platform because it affects YouTube. So I, just about everybody on the platform was like, you're, you're fucked up, man. Like, you're a fucking idiot. This was stupid. Yeah. And so everybody attacked it. We fucking attacked it. And I get that. But then he, Dafferton starts attacking like him being colorblind. Okay. Really? Yeah, like, you're just, you're being an ass at this point. Like, when you were talking about anarcho-capitalism, and you're tearing down governments and shit like that, and you attack the Young Turks and things because they say stupid shit, I'm totally on board with you. I listen to, you know, all the shit that he talks about all the time. But when you just start attacking a person because he's faking being colorblind, for one, who gives a fuck? Two... You can show as much proof as you want. You have no definitive way of knowing that. So if he is in fact colorblind, you're just a complete tool. Yeah. So I just that type of video, and I hate to use Dapperton as an example. It's just the person that comes to mind. Uh, but a lot of people were doing that type of shit, and I think it's ridiculous, and people need to back off. But let's not make this another hour-long video. So let's watch this video from Markiplier, where, like I said, I don't think any of us could say this any better. This is all about. The respect. Respect. What he said. It's something that I feel has been lost lately. I, I even feel like the definition of respect has been muddied a bit. Because people have a tendency to apply it only to accomplishments that they feel are worthy of praise and admiration. 
But I'm talking about respect on a basic level. Even if you just boil it down to common human decency. It's being lost. The golden rule still applies. You still need to treat people the way that you want to be treated. As I said, and you're I seeing don't it less and less these say days. Any than what because people say have an automatic tendency like to assume that to if someone is disagreeing with someone, someone, they are their enemy. And they're inherently bad. And they should be fought. But you can disagree day? with someone so, oh, and still no. respect them. I mean, you can even hate someone. Been friends for you can hate and abhor their actions. They do, they're doing terrible things, and they need to be hated. But you still need to treat them with respect. That's exactly what he's talking about. Just because someone disagrees with you, it doesn't automatically. And you may even be thinking, like, how can you? Do that? That's not possible. If they're a terrible person, they deserve to be treated unfairly. And that's not the way that I want to live. We're all humans. And either we are all humans that are equal and deserve to be treated as equals, or we're not. And I know people are probably going to think that I'm speaking too generally about this, so I want to get specific. I'm talking about this because of the frenzy that's surrounding Felix. Not PewDiePie. Felix. And I want to be very clear about this. Felix is not an anti-Semite. And Felix does not advocate hate. And I'm not even defending the jokes that he made, because even he has apologized for some of the jokes that he did. But he, as a person, as an inherent human being, he's not these labels. This, the reason because I'm it's so because easy to label someone. Talking about it's so easy to do. Exactly it's so easy to boil someone down right to a single word or a phrase, and that's all they are. Even if you're praising them. I mean, normally it's when you're demonizing them. But even if you're praising them, even if you're putting someone on a pedestal, or if you're calling them human scum and trash and garbage, you're inherently dehumanizing them in both aspects. We're gonna stop it there but yeah that's that's why i wanted to take a quick look at this video is because that's exactly what's going on is people are labeling logan paul and that's all he become is a label just mm. he's a piece of shit and people leave it at that so you know again i think everybody needs to back off whatever you're more guilty of just saying he's an idiot yeah yeah he's a dumb kid yeah he's a dumb kid yeah but he's a person there's much more to him than you know what we say and I personally don't know the guy, probably never going to meet him, uh, and I'm sure that if you actually got a chance to talk to him, that you, there's a lot more depth to him uh, than what meets the eye, what you see on YouTube. Uh, now again, I'm not defending him. We stick behind exactly what we said in our video. We're just saying that people need to be, I don't know, you just, people just need to stop with this bandwagon mentality, and people need to stop just attacking the hell out of him. You can Over say, everything. with all due respect, you were wrong. Yeah. Or you can say, hey, fuck you, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. Go to hell. Yeah. Like, there's a difference. Right. So, moving on to our next topic. This is a, a lot... Huh. This is... Here's going to be hard to yeah. show respect. For this is, yeah, this is going to be rough. We normally don't get too political. Uh, we did do a video on <clears> the uh, whole kneeling for the anthem thing, but normally People we, fall right into that. Yeah, we normally avoid politics uh, at almost all costs. For obvious reasons. Yeah, for very obvious reasons. But, so this is something that we just kind of felt the need to talk about just briefly. We're not going to make this video any longer than it needs to be. But for Death Wish Wednesday, we wanted to talk about the TPS, the Temporary Protected Status. And when we're talking about this, we're going to be talking about how it applies to the El Salvador uh, people in general, for, just for right now. So, CNN reports that President Donald Trump's administration is significantly scaling back the number of immigrants granted what's known as temporary protect, protected status, which allows them to live and work legally in the U.S. If you don't know, George W. Bush and Obama both extended the TPS. George Sr. Uh, created it. Yeah, George Sr. is the one who created it. 
Uh, TPS protects these individuals from deportation as a form of humanitarian relief for people who uh, would face extreme hardships if they were forced to return to their homelands, devastated by armed conflict and natural disasters. Under the Trump administration, the Department of Homeland Security has announced the end of TPS for immigrants from El Salvador, Haiti, Sudan, and Nicaragua, but extended it for immigrants from South Sudan. And this year, the agency will decide whether to extend TPS for five other nations, Syria, Nepal, Honduras, Yemen, and Somalia. About 435,000 people from 10 countries have TPS, according to the latest data provided to CNN by U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. So, as we said, we're talking mainly about the El Salvador, Haiti, and Sudan, and Nicaragua uh, people being affected by this uh, pretty, well, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, pretty quickly. So this was decided back, I think, around uh, like February or January yeah, 8th. Yeah, I think it was just like Monday. Yeah. Just like a day ago. Yeah. Uh, Which so, would be January 8th, 2018. For yeah. People watching this like a year from now. Yeah, later on. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, they're giving them, what was it, 18 months? Yeah, I think it was till like March 2019. Yeah. Or something like that. So they're giving them like 18 months to get their affairs in order before they're shipped out. Now, a lot of people, they're, you know, they're, they're arguing about this all over the internet. Uh, things are going crazy. Here's the way I look at it. Just the first thing I look at, you're going to take, let's say, 200,000 people from, you know, the people that we're getting ready to send back in 18 months. Let's say, at a rough estimate, it's about 200,000 people. And that may be low, I don't know. So we pick up, actually, holy shit, right there, it says Trump administration ends protection for more than 200,000 Salvadorians. Mm. So, okay, so <laughs> it's more than 200,000. Anyway, so about 200,000 people, you take them from U.S., where they've been here for two decades, and you pick them up and you say, off you go. Two things are going to happen. One, let's just talk about Salvador, El Salvador, for a minute. Uh, let's say most of those people are from El Salvador and they go home. What do you think is going to happen to that economy? You now have all these people who were not here for 20 years. Uh, the government has rebuilt. It's somewhat stable. You take all these people, you shove them back in their country. They have no jobs. Uh, they have nowhere to go. Like everything's gone for them. You know, they've been gone for 20 years. Uh, they're all unemployed, homeless, and everything's horrible for all these people. So the economy there is going to freaking start to crumble. Crime rate's going to skyrocket. Yeah, crime rate's going to go through the roof. So you're going to destabilize that government. Uh, to me, that's pretty fucked up. However, on the other side of the fence, they're saying this is temporary. Keyword being temporary. Yeah, it's been 20 years. Yeah, it's been 20 30 years. years. So I understand that. And I understand that, yes, it was temporary. So they need to figure out a way to move forward with this without destabilizing the government. But here's the other thing. It's also going to affect our economy because we're shipping away all these people. So their money and taxes go with them. I mean, I know they shipped a lot of their money to El Salvador. But they kept some of it and spent it here yeah. in our economy. So that hurts our economy. Now here's the other thing is we, we talked about this about briefly. What happens to the kids who were born here in that twenty year span? Yeah, they're citizens. Yeah, they're citizens of America. They were born here in our country. Do we tell them they have to go with their parents? Like you're out. Sorry. Uh, you know, especially the kids who were you know, say they were born a year after getting here, well they're freaking nineteen. <clears throat> You know, close to 20 years old, do we make them leave too? You know, they were born here. They're citizens of America. Should we make them leave? Personally, I think we shouldn't. I think it's wrong that if we do. Well, if they're citizens. Yeah, like it's. They're citizens. It goes against America. It goes against what we are as a country. If we're trying to make them leave, we'd have to make a deal with El Salvador. Yeah. It's, it's not right. So, I don't see them doing that, of course, then again, you never know, with Trump's administration. Um, 
but if they do, it just it goes against what America is. Um, we're, we're a nation of immigrants. Yeah. Sorry. Fuck you. But, well, I'm like generally sorry. Yeah. I know. <laughs> um, That's one thing that aggravates the hell out of me when people will, they actually start bitching about <clears throat> immigrants coming into America. The reason I get heated about it is because uh, we've stated it over and over on the channel. I am 80% Native American. Uh, so I, you know, obviously I side with being Native American. That's how I was raised. And uh, people want to talk about immigrants coming to America. And I'm just immediately, it, that just, that rage of, are you fucking kidding me? You're going you're gonna to talk about immigrants coming to America to a Native American. Go <laughs> fuck yourself with the biggest dick you can find. Well, maybe they don't want the same thing happening to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they don't want immigrants. I just think Fuck, we did it. We don't want it to happen to us. I just think it's bullshit because, no, I don't, I don't necessarily think we should have open borders. I mean, but I don't know how to fucking regulate it. I'm not a politician and I'm not, you know, in, in the midst of all that, so I don't know what the hell we could do, but something's got to change. Jump cut! So, yeah. Uh, in the midst of what he was just talking about. How did I get... Where, where was I? I was here, and then I wasn't... I disappeared. Magic. Uh, yeah, the camera fucked up, so... Anyway, as you were saying. So, I saw... I saw horrible things. <laughs> um, the Democrats were mad. I, I was doing my research yeah. on Fox News, of all things. And we all know Fox News is very unbiased. Um, when, when straight down the line when it comes to Donald Trump, they, they, they call it right down the middle. Yeah. Uh, but they made a good point that I talked to some like analysts like they always do. Of course. And he said that it's possible because as everything like this, it's a political play to gain something. Right. And Trump was using this as a bargaining chip. Uh, because obviously the Democrats are pretty pissed off about this right now. So he's saying that Trump's going to like call a meeting with them and say, Look, if you want to keep it, if you want to keep your TPS, fine. We'll extend it. But what are we going to do about my wall, baby? Because he's obsessed with that damn wall. Yeah. Like, that's like, I swear, he wants that to be his legacy. Like, his monument to his narcissism. Yeah. This wall, which... Dumb? That's a whole other video, but yeah, it's a stupid idea. Oh, Here so come the hate comments. But it's not going to fix anything. Yeah. So, anyway, that's we t we touched on that for a moment. Uh, like, the borders, I don't believe that we should have open borders, but I, I'd say there's a lot more than building a wall. That's going to, you know, it's, it, that's not going to fix anything. Right. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I think you might be right. It does seem like a political ploy because every president up until now has been like, we're going to extend it. And I think a lot of it's not because they were just extending it because the countries are still fucked up. Yeah, they had something to gain. Whether it was to get votes yeah, or... They, they had something to gain from it and there was an understanding behind it uh, just about being human in general. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's a political ploy that he's probably going to use to be like, all right, we can extend it, but what are we going to do about this? Like you said, that, that's, that's a good way of looking at it. I, I could definitely get behind, you know, seeing that as a thing, but I don't know. We have 18 months to find out what the fuck happens. Yep. So I guess we will uh, we'll all find out together how this world burns. I mean, uh, turns. Uh, anyway, guys, we're Death Wish, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace. And remember, next time you debate with somebody, instead of hurling insults, it's all about the respect. respect. <laughs> That's going to become our new thing. Yes. Thanks, Logan. Okay. Okay. You're such a fuck. Me none. You say you a gangster, ain't seen a thing you done I do it